Let's talk culling. Culling is a matter of eliminating triangles. We're not interested in drawing. For example, we can see the teapot here. I can fly into the middle of the teapot and look at the inside of the teapot. Let me close that and come over here and say GL enable. GL cull the faces of triangles that I'm not interested in looking at. I'll describe what that means in a minute, but let's enable that. And we can see the outside of the teapot. And then I fly into the teapot and the inside of the teapot is now gone. I can see one side of triangles but not another. For example, with this spout that's off here, we can see the top of the spout but I cannot see the inside of the spout. What cooling does is simply not render triangles that are facing away from us. For example, when I fly out here, these are the triangles we can see the front of. Okay, all these triangles. This is the front side of all these triangles. Here's a triangle, it looks like. Here's another triangle somewhere in there. Triangle, I don't know, maybe that's a triangle. All these triangles are considered facing the camera. They're front facing. And so the graphics hardware is like, yeah, let's let's draw them. We can see them. They're, they're facing the camera. Uh, but if I fly into the teapot, then all these triangles inside they're considered facing away from the camera so why do I want to draw a triangle that is not facing the camera well if your situation or your game is set up that you can fly into geometry for whatever reason then yeah you would probably want to render the inside of objects but generally we don't fly inside of objects we keep the player outside of the objects and so we don't want to render the inside of the objects we want to cull that away it's actually expensive to render all of that geometry that's facing away from the camera. Let me, let me uh, comment that out and restart our program. And I'll illustrate why that is. Let's fly into the teapot. And all these triangles in here, I'll just try to pick on one. These are kind of small. I'm going to guess that's, that looks like a triangle, sure. And triangle, triangle, I'll just circle them. Triangle, triangle, triangle. You can see all these triangles here. When we're rendering, we say render all these triangles, and not only do we have to worry about which vertices are connected for which, which triangles, but we also have to worry about all the fragments inside of the triangle. Fragments, fragments, or I guess they're pixels now, they're fragments that turned into pixels. Pixels, we have to worry about all that. But when I fly outside the teapot, and if my game's set up correctly, that I cannot fly into the teapot, running the fragment shader for all these fragments in here is a waste of time because they will be eliminated via the depth test. Okay, the depth test says the well, camera's not going to fly into the teapot. We are going to render all these triangles, these front-facing triangles. We're going to render all these triangles, and these triangles will cover up all the work we do when we try to render the backside of all these triangles. So calculating this is a waste of time if you're not going to allow the user to ever fly inside of your geometry. So we want to cool that away. We don't want that expense of running all the fragment shader instances for all these fragments. So when we turn on culling, we simply say, hey, hardware, take the three vertices of a triangle and calculate whether that triangle is facing the camera. This would be facing the camera. I'm trying to draw an arrow pointing at us. Or facing away from the camera. Okay, that's, that's pointing into the distance. If the triangle is facing away from the, tri the camera, then don't worry about running the fragment shader for all the fragments in that triangle. It's a waste of time. Don't do it. And that's what culling is. It's better than the depth test because with the depth test, we still have to run the fragment shader all those times. And then for each fragment, we have to test their depth against the depth of all the other fragments. And these fragments out here will win if we don't allow our camera to fly inside. So culling is a nice optimization. We say, hey, cull face. And by default, that culls the front of a triangle. In the next video, I'll describe what it means to be the front of the triangle. But essentially, when I fly into the teapot, all the triangles that are not facing the camera, they, they, they don't get rendered. Okay, no fragment shader. No, nothing. Now, these triangles out here are still facing the camera. They're front facing the camera. I can fly outside of the teapot and I can still see the handle out here if I can control my ca cam camera correctly. Well, that's essentially what, what culling is. Now, culling has some scenarios you can do. By default, we cull the back side of triangles, but we could certainly cull the front. I can say cull face GL 
back that's the default setting we won't witness any changes here when I build this run this here's the front side of the triangles back side of the triangles are now gone but I could say hey call the front side of the triangles why you'd want to do this I'm not sure but you certainly could do this maybe you want to make an eerie game where you can see the inside of everything but not the outside everything notice all those those back facing triangles are being rendered but the front facing triangles are not it looks like the handle and the spout the front facing triangles are being rendered but they're not we're seeing the back side of the triangles inside of the spout we could also say hey call the front and uh, I think it's and yep front and back call both sides why would you want to do this <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Gives you a blank screen. I know it has no effect when you're rendering points and lines, but uh, I don't know why you'd use that setting. Anyway, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how the hardware calculates whether a triangle is the back side of the triangle is facing the camera or whether the front side is facing the camera. We'll talk about that. I'll demonstrate some stuff in the next video.